This is the third video on the SUMP series that deals with the effect of including reactive elements in electronic circuits, inductors, and or capacitors. In previous videos, we have seen how the inclusion of those reactive elements change what used to be algebraic equations into differential equations. In the previous tutorial on p-operator, we have seen how to obtain those differential equations. And now we start to concern ourselves with solving said differential equations. We begin this video with a definition, steady state, one that we will use often. A circuit is said to be in steady state if all the switches in it, either open switches or closed switches, they have not been moved for a very long time. And of course, we have to define, which we'll do later, how much time it is a very long time. If the independent sources in the circuit are all DC, and if the circuit's been said to be in steady state, then we say that the circuit is in DC steady state, DCSS. A consequence of that, that we shall see, is that in DC steady state, all voltages and all currents are constant. In my class, sometimes I ask my students a question out of the knowledge frame of reference, out of their comfort zone. Let's see how you fare with this one that uh, precedes the theory in this lecture. I give them preconditions assumed to be true and ask them to compute something based on the supposed correctness of those preconditions. For this class, please join my students and answer the following what if question. Let's assume that in DC steady state, inductors behave like short circuits and capacitors behave like open circuits. We are told that the circuit in the figure on the right is in DC steady state. Compute the current in the inductor on the top and the voltage in the capacitor near the bottom. Will you? I will not publish the answers, but I invite you to do the exercise, to pause the video, and then to post your solution on YouTube and compare with other viewers your results. And we begin. We know that we can store energy in the electric field between the plates of a capacitor. We learned that in physics, that is right. We also know that we cannot move energy from one point of space to another in no time. We cannot do that. So uh, the energy stored in the capacitor cannot be changed instantaneously. That is an interesting, an interesting statement. The energy stored in the capacitor cannot change instantaneously. Let's see the inductor. In the inductor, we can store energy in the magnetic field surrounding it. The energy stored in the inductor for the same reason cannot change instantaneously. So, same as with the capacitor, we cannot change its energy instantaneously. We cannot move energy out of the inductor's field and move it somewhere else. No, we can do that in no time at all. We need some time to do that. Energy, huh? Let's compute the energy in the capacitor, a formula that was given to us in physics first year. Let's do that in detail. How do I compute the energy in an electric device? You say, oh, easy. If I had the power as a function of time, I could integrate that power with respect to time and get the energy in the capacitor. Hmm, that's a good plan. But however, I don't have the power as a function of time in the capacitor. You say, well, but power we've seen before in the series, in this very, very series, is the product of the anion. Yeah, so it is. And the current in the capacitor is C dV dt. Multiply that current by the voltage and you get the power. Hmm, that's a good plan. Multiply them like so. And that is the power, Cv dV dt. Integrate that with respect to time and you will get the energy in the capacitor. Check this out dt dt cancel out and you get that the energy is c the integral what is the integral of v dv when i asked that question in class all my students jump and with a single voice they say it's v square over 2 
Of course it is. So the energy in the capacitor is one half the capacitance that multiplies the square of the voltage across the capacitor. And that is a very, very powerful formula. You know why? Because it does not concern itself with the history of that capacitor. To find the energy in the capacitor, we do not care with what's happened to the capacitor ever since it was made at the factory. No, we only need what is the voltage right now, square it, multiply by C divided by 2, and that is the energy at this point in time in the capacitor. Hmm, interesting. And what if the voltage is a function of time? Fine. In that case, the energy stored is also a function of time. Duh. So let's write it down. The energy in the capacitor is given by that a formula. Because the energy in the capacitor, we have said, cannot change instantaneously. That means that the voltage in the capacitor cannot change instantaneously either, and that is actually what we wanted to find. The voltage in a capacitor cannot change instantaneously. It cannot. And what if the voltage is a function of time? I've said already. Then the energy in the capacitor is also a function of time. Let's do the same for the inductor. Fine. Find the energy. How? The voltage in the inductor is L di dt multiplied by the current to obtain the power and integrate power, like so. Hmm. Integral of I di, you know, it's I square over 2. Right. The same story again. The energy in the inductor depends exclusively on the current in the inductor right now. Super. And... Uh, the conclusion is, because we know that the energy stored in the magnetic field surrounding an inductor is proportional to the square of the current, and we also know that that energy cannot change instantaneously, the natural conclusion is that the current in the inductor cannot change instantaneously either, and that is actually what we wanted to obtain. The current in an inductor cannot change instantaneously. And what if it's a function of time, the current? Fine, the energy is a function of time as well. But what we found was very important, all right? In a capacitor, voltage does not change instantaneously. In an inductor, current does not change instantaneously. The conclusions are what? The inductor in this steady state. We've said that in this steady state, all currents are constant, right? Right. Then in an inductor, yeah. In an inductor, the voltage that's always been given by its behavioral equation, L di dt, but the current in the inductor is constant. So the voltage, L di dt, has to be, and you answer, as my students do, is it is zero. That's right. In this steady state, the voltage across an inductor is zero. So that means that that inductor behaves as a wire, as a short circuit, if you want to be proper. In this steady state, inductors behave as short circuits. What about capacitors? Well, in this steady state, all voltages are constant, right? In a capacitor, the current is given by this formula. IC is C dVdt. But the voltage in the capacitor V is constant, so dVdt is zero, and the current through the capacitor is zero in DC steady state. Conclusion, in DC steady state, the capacitor is an open circuit, period. Nice. In DC steady state, capacitors behave as open circuits. Summary, DC, all sources are constant. Steady state, a long time passed since any switch was opened or closed. In inductors, can, currents cannot change instantaneously. In capacitors, voltages cannot change instantaneously. This is a summary of what we've obtained so far. By the way, who is t equals zero? It is an arbitrarily chosen point in time. The actual, real t equals zero was the Big Bang. But that was 14 and a half billion years ago. And nowadays, in electronic circuits, we call t equals zero the point in time when we open a switch or when we close a switch, we say 
t equals zero we open the switch or we close the switch well the thing is that right before zero and right after zero the voltage in the capacitor has the same value v at zero minus for the capacitor and v at zero plus for the capacitor are the same and the same can be said about the current in an inductor right before and right after we move the switch the currents are the same in the inductor why do we care about those expressions well let me tell you be because very often right before we move the switch the circuit was in DC steady state capacitors were open circuits inductors were short circuits and computing voltages and currents was very easy so it's very easy to compute the voltage and capacitor right before we operate switches and currents in inductors too and then we move the switches and we know because of that what is going to be the initial value of the voltage in the capacitor the initial value of the current in an inductor that is a y in this is that state we said we can represent an inductor with a wire and we can represent a capacitor with an open circuit in general not only in DC steady state the energy in the capacitor is given by that formula even as functions of time and the energy in the inductor is given by this other formula that is a general formula very often at the end of the class I asked top hat questions what is top hat look it up top hat from monocle well I used top hat to ask questions like this what are two elements that become wires under certain circumstances who are they I asked those and my students responded wisely those two elements are of course inductors in DC steady state they behave like wires and also independent voltage sources when we kill sources they also became wires what two elements become open circuits under certain circumstances and their answer was well capacitors become open circuits in DC steady state and current sources become open circuits when we are killing the sources in a circuit if I triple the voltage in an inductor its energy becomes nine times larger true or false the answer is is false yeah the energy in the inductor does not depend on the voltage in the inductor depends on the current so false if I double the voltage in the capacitor its energy triplicates the energy in the capacitor depends on the voltage that part's right but if I double the voltage four times the energy not three times tutorial time let's apply that to this very simple circuit that has two inductors and one capacitor the circuit has been as shown for a very long time that means that whatever switches are there are either closed or open and they have been like that for for a long long time the circuit is in steady state we search for sources and find only one and the only one source is a direct current source it is DC the circuit is in DC steady state and the um, consequence is that we can represent inductors with wires and capacitors with open circuit compute the energy stored in each of the inductors and in the capacitor DC steady state right so let me redraw the circuit in DC steady state the inductor on the top left becomes a wire the inductor on the top right a wire and the capacitor an open circuit like so fine I have redrawn the circuit in DC steady state and that one I can solve and solving that is rather straightforward right I need to find the current in the inductor on the top and also the current on the inductor on the far right and the voltage in the capacitor nice reference node one solved for uh, that circuit it's rather straightforward you have a KCL equation and, and then you solve for them a yeah? KCL equation and then you solve for the voltage at the top 2.14 volts if I use out of that voltage of the node on the top a voltage divider between 5 and 4 ohms I find the voltage in the 5 ohm resistor which is the same voltage in the capacitor 1.19 volts and that is a voltage in the capacitor fine and this one that is the 
current on the far right is the voltage on the top with respect to the reference node divided by the 2 ohm resistor that is 1.07 amperes that is the current in the inductor on the far right and the current on the top well you could have computed that as 10 minus v1 over 6 right but no no i couldn't do that i went ahead all grandiose and said that is just the source divided by the total resistance seen by the source which is 6 in series with a parallel of 2 and 5 plus 4 and that is again 1.31 amperes and that is the solution of that circuit with those values of course you can use the formulas and tell me what are the energy is stored in those three reactive elements summary this has all been very interesting but the main two points here have been the current and inductor cannot change instantaneously and a voltage in the capacitor cannot change instantaneously either in particular before and after t equals zero the voltage in the capacitor is the same and the current in the inductor is the same and that has been all for this one, my invisible friends.